Hello, everybody. It's uh, about 11 o'clock. We will um, get started. I'm going to give about two minutes uh, for folks to still get on. There's quite a few folks um, logging on right now. So we'll get started in about two minutes. Okay, we will uh, go ahead and get started. Um, like to thank everybody uh, for attending. Um, Tom, are, are you there also? Tom's one of the panelists with myself. I sure am. I'm here. Great. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, <clears throat> the uh, purpose of this webinar is to really look at utility analytics and creating a way to really uh, jumpstart enterprise analytics. So think of it from the perspective of analytics across the organization, how to bring everything together and, and connect the dots. Um, Extensible and Oracle um, had partnered together uh, a number of years ago to start working on, on addressing this. And so the idea is we kind of want to review and look at some of the possibilities and, and how you can actually solve some of the problems um, within the industry and the organizations today. So our agenda, we, we'll go over a brief intro um, of uh, each of us, myself as well as Tom. We'll start to look at and understand kind of the current utility analytic issues, um, what's being faced right now, um, especially when you start talking about the digitalization of uh, utilities, as well as um, advancing analytics and talking even about big data. Um, how does this all play in the picture? And then looking at that issue, kind of addressing it from a, a semantic modeling approach, and what does that mean um, within the organization? What does that mean and what does that look like? And then we'll talk about uh, uh, the Oracle Utility Data Model, um, an overview of what is that and how it can actually address uh, the issue right now um, within the utility analytics space, as well as going over a, a brief demo of how it can actually be utilized, um, a little bit of company background information, and then we'd like to be able to open up to um, Q and A um, if we, provided we have enough time, which I, I think we will. And I would just ask that any questions that you guys have uh, for any of the listeners to please submit it um, via the questions um, tab um, as far as the, the chat capability within the webinar. <coughs> So moving on to the intros. So myself, I'm Michael Corbrubius. I'm with uh, Extensible Solutions. Extensible is part of uh, the Doble Engineering Company. Um, I've been with Extensible for uh, a little over a year, and then prior to that, uh, I had worked for uh, one of the utility companies in the Southwest for um, well, nearly a decade. Um, but I kind of have the well, dual role, if you will. I'm a principal consultant. Um, as well as oversee the uh, market strategy and, and actually our solutions that we put together and, and help deliver to our customers. Tom, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, hello everybody. Uh, good morning or afternoon, depending on where you are. Uh, uh, my name is Tom Aford. Um, 
Uh, you can see on the screen there, my title is Global Industry Specialist for uh, Utility Operations here at Oracle. I'm part of the uh, Oracle Utilities Global Business Unit, which is a, a, a company within a company, essentially, within Oracle that's fully dedicated to serving the needs of electric, gas, water, and wastewater utilities. Um, I've been with Oracle now about six years. Prior to that, I spent 15 years at uh, Pacific Corp in Portland, Oregon, as well as some time overseas at PowerCore Australia, uh, helping them uh, with their outage management implementation. I'm a power systems engineer by education and spent most of my career in operation support, engineering, and asset management. And uh, my role with Oracle is, uh, so I, I actually, I'm a subject matter expert for utilities for Oracle, and I meet with utilities all around the world to understand uh, their emerging needs and making sure that we, uh, that our solutions uh, can meet those needs, as, and, and I basically feed back those needs into our products to make sure that uh, this is kind of how our product development uh, cycle happens. So I'm kind of the, uh, the go-between between utilities and our utilities product development folks. Very good. <clears throat> so what I'd like to do is I'm going to turn over to Tom. Um, Tom will kind of go over looking at and understanding the current utility analytic issues that uh, many of you folks on the on the call right now may be faced with or, or trying to deal with right now. So Tom, turn it over to you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Michael. So uh, utility analytics, uh, we've been hearing a lot about this over the last five or so years. Uh, analytics is just, if you Google it, it's it's just, you know, there's millions and millions of hits now. It's kind of like the, the next big thing uh, in terms of the industry is what are we going to do with all this data we're now collecting? Um, we we saw it in in other industries in financial and retail services, healthcare, other other things, and it's, it's kind of made its way over into the utility space. Um, and there's a, a huge amount of growth around this. And and what's really driving this? Uh, the whole concept of smart grid, certainly um, AMI data that we now have, as well as uh, kind of what we're seeing now is sort of the beyond the meter type of uh, activities around in, Internet of Things. Uh, looking at things like smart thermostats and home energy management, building energy management, smart cities, those types of initiatives are all generating a huge amount of data that utilities, frankly, could use if they could get it. And then once they do have it, what do you do with it uh, once you see it? So uh, there's a bunch of different areas of focus. And it's really important to keep in mind that these are all very, very important, all four of these areas. Um, everyone. We, we see now jumping straight to the predictive and prescriptive analytics, thinking that's, that's uh, you know, where, where all the gold is. And that's true to a certain degree, right? We want to understand where we're going and what we need to do to get there. But in order to do that, we must have a very solid foundation as to where we are and, and how we got to where we got. So that basic business intelligence, the what happened, the, and then the descriptive analytics, meaning how did it happen, are very, very important to validate those predictive and prescriptive models to make sure we're not trying to drive without seeing where the road actually is, right? So that's that's the key there. Once we have those two basic building blocks, we can then move on to say, where are predictive analytics? In other words, what's going to happen? And then finally, the prescriptive analytics is, what changes do I need to make today to make the outcome I want happen? So that's that's very, very important to keep in mind. Uh, Gartner recommends uh, there's a building a digital business technology platform, which is really a, a, a way to say we just need to make sense of all this information that we have coming in, making sure the data and analytics together in a platform that includes management of that data so we understand where it is, what it is, and what it means. Okay, next slide. So uh, GTM Research, and they're one of many, actually, predicting that Power Grid Analytics is going to grow into a $3.8 billion a year market, uh, which is absolutely huge. We're, we're, we're seeing, you know, estimates of 13 to even 15 or 16 percent growth rates in terms of how, how big that market is. And you can see on the right here some of the areas that uh, certainly are already being looked at. This is the, the data on the right is, is coming from IDC. Um, and the biggies so far have been around customer behavior, interaction, uh, energy consumption, and field service optimization. That's sort of where the state of the market is today. 
where we see things going is some of the ones uh, down lower on the list that we really uh, think are going to start to be even more prominent, uh, especially when it comes to things like asset performance management, uh, the sensor-based grid optimization, and then using that data to drive distribution load forecasting, bottom-up forecasting, matching with top-up, uh, top-down forecasting. We really see a lot of uh, analytics uh, coming in the next few years around that, as well as more advanced customer type analytics as the utility industry starts going the way of telecommunications and other uh, retail and, and, and things in the more competitive markets in the retail markets. So that's a huge amount of, uh, of potential here and utilities can really gain a lot of uh, ad competitive advantage by getting a better handle on their data. Next slide please. So what we're really seeing now is a tornado of information data. Um, we've, we've seen terms like you know tsunamis and other things uh, for this as well, and it's it's really a mix of defined data as well as relevant undefined data that we can get our hands on, as well as a bunch of information that may not be relevant at all. And so the the idea is to understand that not all data is going to be uh, uh, applicable to all situations and be able to quickly filter that out and, and, and find the information that we need quickly. Because that's the only way we're going to get to be able to drive our business value and growth, is being able to clearly articulate what our strategy is, understand the various use cases and the business processes that support those use cases, and the value for uh, uh, what those use cases are going to bring. And again, understanding how, how, you know, what that data is and how do we manage it, where is it, where is it coming from, what its history is, how accurate it is, um, as well as how well is it integrated with all of the other data sources. You know, how, can we define what those shared uh, dimensions are and make sure that we maintain that proper relationship? And then how do we establish that uh, reference architecture so we can incorporate new sets of data once we see it, right? And that's what's going to drive our, our time to market. It's going to drive additional business insights as well as really power our financial and service growth. So where are we really at this point, given, given all of the uh, information that we have? And we probably haven't done a great job in defining all that information. It's sitting in a bunch of different silos. Uh, corporate IT tends to come out with these overarching enterprise data warehouse projects, but they tend to move so slowly and because we're trying to define the universe, and all the while the universe continues to expand. Um, what ends up happening is we've, we wind up with a lot of departmental level solutions or even what we call shadow IT uh, that emerge as a result to, to meet the necessary and, and immediate business needs that exist. And so around there's domain specific analytic solutions in customer care and meter management, network management, grid operations, field and work management, and, and potentially a lot of other different use cases. And so we, what we need to do is bring all that information together and recognize that we need to be nimble and that we need to be adaptable and flexible, but we want to still have a, a, have a top-down approach, but don't slow the business down as a result. You know, so we need to get rid of these multiple data staging repositories. Yeah, Third-party visualization tools are okay as long as they're all linked to a, a common matrix and a common uh, uh, data visualization uh, strategy. Um, but again, these multiple data warehouses, multiple data marts, um, just getting sense of all that information, bringing it all together into a single common roadmap, if you will, um, is really where the, where the key is here. Um, and, and what ends up happening here is you just miss that data context. It's, you don't understand what information is where, what it means, what, you know, there may be similar information in multiple data sources, but how do we merge those easily? How do we understand that, you know, what a customer system says a customer is versus what an outage management system says a customer is. Are those two ideas compatible, right? Can we, can we easily merge those things together to be able to draw insights from multiple data sources? So that's really the key is, is having that sort of cross-application, cross-business pro uh, process roadmap uh, and visualization capability. Okay. So what's needed for success? is that common understanding of data throughout the organization. So that's the, that's the key. We understand what is out there, where it is, and what it is. 
and then we interpret that data the same way across the organization. So again, a customer is a customer is a customer. A meter is a meter is a meter. Transformer is a transformer is a transformer. Um, once we get that level of understanding, and you know, because again, there are some systems that would say a customer is the account, or the customer is the premise, or the customer is the meter, right? We need to make sure that we're all talking apples to apples to apples across the enterprise. And so where we have those uh, kind of uh, differences in definitions, we need to understand what those are and how to link one to the other. And once we have that capability, then we need a, a common means for consuming that data and then importing and exporting it to a third party and potentially to value add cloud services. Okay? All right, so I'm gonna turn it back over to Michael uh, to dive into a little more about the semantic model capabilities. Thank you, Tom. So as Tom was saying, one of the, one of the key things is really understanding and knowing your data. Um, this isn't something that's new within the utility space. Um, but there hasn't been a, a lot of, uh, a lot of usage of it, if you will, um, been like Tom mentioned before, a lot of focus as far as kind of getting those predictive analytics in place. However, the, the issue comes to, as Tom said, understanding and knowing your data. So when we talk about semantic modeling, um, that's really the idea is you have all your different systems, right? Um, and you, you integrate them from a semantic approach as Tom mentioned, a meter is a meter is a meter. Whether I have four different AMI vendors or I have one, majority of uh, companies have multiples, of course, and they're all a little bit different. Um, uh, but you have to be able to define what does that mean within the organization and how you're going to utilize it. Um, and so one of the key things with that is, you know, bringing in the industry standards, for example, like the SIM. Um, to help define that. A lot of work's been spent on that. But now you're being able to create this model-driven approach for integration and modeling, which essentially then helps from an analytics perspective. Because if you integrate and understand and know your data, now you're going to be able to connect the dots and slice and dice the data, if you will, um, from an analytics perspective. So this is an approach that um, Extensible has been focusing and working on for a, for a number of years since since the company was established, and um, this is kind of the the notion that Tom was talking about that we started to work with uh, Oracle on. So the idea is really establishing this loosely coupled architecture, um, and the key here is right there at that red dot, right, uh, going across my different layers of my application, my inter my integration, my enterprise data layer, as well as my analytics layer, is the base, the foundation of that is really all the model-driven design of the data within my organization. The one thing I always like to say is people will come and go, systems will be replaced and updated, processes will be changed, but the thing that will always stay consistent with the organization that they need is the data. I mean, anytime you're doing a system upgrade, one of the first things, uh, uh, conversations come up is, okay, if we're going to upgrade or replace, how much of the data are we going to save? How are we going to get access to the data? How are we going to be able to still um, integrate it with the current system? Um, so a lot of the focus has to be around the data. And it's at that point right there, that red point, is when you really understand and know the data. Because that is what's going to drive not only from an integration perspective, but it will drive those insights that will really allow a company to be kind of, as Gartner talked about, the digitized um, company of offering new services and new insights within the organization. And so really establishing those business semantics and establishing what that data model looks like from a semantic perspective is key and foundation for, for the rest of the architecture. So when working with Oracle um, and looking at, you know, developing a, a, uh, a solution to address the challenges faced within the utility space um, around analytics in particularly, what we did is we partnered with them to look at the MDI3 tool set um, and we utilized that as far as helping to develop the Oracle utility data model. So I'm not going to go on a lot into the MD3i tool set, but just from a conceptual standpoint, the idea was establishing that model and bringing in other utility models, um, for example, the SIM, 
um, as well as the SID, which we'll get into a little bit more later on, um, that can build that model because a lot of work has been done in different uh, silos, if you will, or different parts of the utility organization, and it's really about bringing those together so that it can then sit on top of a foundational platform that can really drive out the um, analytics within the organization um, through the presentation layer. So really, the idea was utilizing this three, MD3i methodology and tool set combining it with uh, information as well as the products and, and known products that, the, um, that, for example, Oracle has to set the foundation for utilities. So now we'll get into a little more overview uh, of OUDM, and I'm going to turn that over okay. to uh, Tom. Yeah, sounds great. So you've already seen this picture, but it's a little more uh, uh, blown up here. But this is this is basically the con uh, conceptual architecture of the Oracle Utilities data model. So um, what is this thing, right? Um, and what we started with it, it's it's a it's essentially a logical data model and a and a companion physical model. And that foundation layer is defined as as Michael said. It's it's really began with the common information model, the SIM, IEC uh, SIM model. Now, we didn't just, uh, we, we definitely wanted to make sure that we started with a standard. That was kind of the, the whole point of this exercise was to begin with an industry standard model that uh, could, could essentially model as much of the utility as possible. Um, and so the SIM was the logical choice just because it is, it is easily the most complete industry standard model in existence today. However, there are some, as we all know, some limitations to the SIM. In certain areas, there are known weak points, uh, so to speak. One of them is around the model of the customer. The, the SIM currently uh, is, is relatively weak. It's a very simple model uh, in terms of the, you know, how customers are modeled today. And we recognize that, and, and as a result, what we did is we looked around to other industries to see where we could bring in a more sophisticated customer model, certainly something that we could look to the future to say this would this would meet more of our needs longer term in the utility industry. And one of the areas we uh, we saw was uh, telecommunications, um, certainly a much more robust customer model from a churn perspective, from a customer retention, all this, you know, you know, kind of look where we, where the utility industry is versus where the telecommunications industry is. We're about 10 to 15 years behind them, so to speak from a retail perspective, right, with all the new smartphones and this and that and the other um, side of things. So it turns out the telecommunications uh, industry has its own common information model that they call the SID. Michael mentioned that earlier. So what we did is we lifted the customer model out of the SID and essentially joined that with the kind of the T&D side of uh, the SIM uh, to to come up with what we thought was a much more robust model and in uh, for what uh, utilities would be using long term. And, and what we also did too is we proposed those changes back to the uh, IEC TC57 working groups as a replacement for that customer model. And that's in uh, kind of ongoing discussions now as to whether that's going to be adopted. But uh, the idea is that that's, that's how this all came together. Um, so again, what we have is that logical model, which is, sorry, just if you go, so I did want to talk a little bit about that logical model, the physical data model, that, that, that uh, physical data model is third normal form with some a companion star schemas. There's the pre-built uh, OLAP, uh, online analytical processing models, pre-built mining models, entry ETL between the various schemas. So between the uh, third normal form foundation layer and the various reporting stars, um, and as well as the uh, pre-built uh, metadata for tools like uh, or Oracle Business Intelligence, but that could also be done by partners with for other tools like Cognos or Business Objects or, or tools like that. Um, and then again, uh, Michael did mention the MD3i framework. Again, we won't talk too much about that uh, here as well, but what I wanted to mention here was it's, it's just a kind of a pre-configured, pre uh, 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 integration method uh, that really streamlines the the uh, uh, integration of data from 
various data sources into the OUDM, and that, that's the big thing that we saw was really huge value from an Oracle perspective, is that really helps uh, kind of supercharge that effort to be able to bring in disparate data within uh, in, into the OUDM and then back out again to the various uh, reporting applications, okay? So this would be kind of how this all comes together from an architectural perspective. So you see that semantic model uh, sitting there, the, the long horizontal gray bar, and that's really where the OUDM uh, semantic foundation layer would sit, as, is basically the mask over which all of the other data sources within the utility would sit. Now this could be uh, both application data sources as well as data warehouse or data lake or any you know data drip, data feed, data whatever. Um, uh, data sources on the utility side. So wherever that data sits, wherever the, the final resting place is for that data is where that semantic, semantic model would, would sit over top of that and then provide information to the various analytics engines, where whatever those may be. They also may be third-party tools. They may be even cloud services, uh, potentially. Uh, you know, things like GE Predicts or Oracle Data Raker or, or IBM Watson, whatever. Um, can sit on top of that uh, and provide value on top of that. But the idea is that the utility itself would own their own data and own their own relationships. All that data is then be provided as sort of value add to uh, external services as well as internal uh, processing engines. And then we'd surface all that through the various dashboards and visualization tools, be they Oracle tools or IBM tools, Tableau, SAP, whomever. So that's kind of how all these, all these uh, these pieces fit together. Okay, and I'm going to turn it over to Michael. He can kind of go a little bit in depth onto what all these various tools and, uh, and layers are. All right, thank you, Tom. So yeah, if we look at it from the logical model um, of how this was all kind of constructed and put together, Tom started to allude to that. But w you know, we brought in the the SIM standards as well as the SID um, to help create the foundation of it. Um, we did, as Tom mentioned, made some changes to the SIM. But the idea really here is from a logical perspective is that this is a platform independent. Um, and that's really the key is this is describing, this helps a, a, a utility describe the data um, and then you're able to map the data. That way you can actually be able to do your analytics off of it. Um, so many times a lot of times an analytic project may come along and very quickly it found out that there's certain data that's missing or how are we going to populate that data or it's, trend, it's understood by one area or the organization one way and, and another area or department a different way. So really this helps establish a, a platform independent. You have the foundational layer that really helps to ensure that you have the, the reference integrity of the data as Tom mentioned, you have it in a third normal form, and that's that's utilized to ensure that there's no data redundancy um, and ensure the um, transparency of the data. And then you get into that analytic form um, or layer, and that's where you're able to really um, see the schemas, and we'll kind of see in, in the demo some of the packages that have been put together off of those schemas that you can actually be able to utilize to develop the analytics and actually have the analytics independent of the um, technology. <clears throat> so if we look at the um, foundational layer, as we mentioned, that's this is where actually um, the detailed record information of the transactions is actually stored. So it's in the third normal form. Um, you know, it's, it's a business neutral model that allows, uh, you know, the user to be able to drill down into the data as they start to look at the um, the data and, and actually do mining on the data. Um, so the, the patterns are in there and this is what Tom was saying at the beginning that this foundational layer is extremely um, critical for being able to do advanced analytics, especially if you start trying to look at any type of predictive analytics. Um, you have to have this foundation on how all the pieces kind of put together and how all the boxes connect, if you will, that's the idea of the diagram uh, on that's being displayed right now on the screen is how they actually all connect. And so that's where this foundation layer um, is established so that you can be able to utilize it. And then taking that foundation layer, we move into the analytic layer. 
Um, and this is, as Tom mentioned, you know, you have the, the star schemas and your cubes that you can start to be able to slice and dice the information, if you will, um, and create the, uh, the aggregates and the summaries that you can be able to display throughout uh, the different reports that you want to generate and the users want to be able to develop. If we look at it from the physical, what is this actually built up and how does this actually look? Well, a couple key things uh, to make sure everybody understands is that within the actual physical model, when you actually deploy this, and, and once again, this is something that just you can be able to deploy um, on a relational database type. You can do it with an Oracle, um, have been instances uh, as far as uh, MS SQL also, and then we'll kind of see some other possible options as far as looking at the enterprise, how you can be able to do it. But within the actual physical model, you have all the partitions set up, um, the indexes, and the materialized views. Um, that way you can be able to look at the performance and to make sure that from a performance standpoint, um, you're, you're running optimally. When you look at the actual physical data model, there's a couple of different um, elements to kind of look at. Once is, one is you'll definitely, have, you, there's reference tables that are within there. Um, these reference tables are really utilized for storing the master entities. Um, and and this, these are entities are then used to actually do the translation into the dimensional and the hierarchies. And so when you actually look at the impl physical implementation, you'll see there's a number of tables that are prefixed with like a, D, a DWR. And that really um, is the reference tables so for example there's a you know a customer information reference table um, that you can be able to look at another aspect of the actual physical implementation is the lookup table and so to help uh, ensure performance um, there's a, a description of these uh, lookup entity tables that have common lookups that are utilized um, throughout the whole uh, schema and so this will help uh, as far as performance and so these ones here, you can actually be able to drive down and look at, and we'll see in a, in a sample in, in, in the demo here in a bit that these tables are actually uh, denoted by a DWL. So this is getting into like my customer type, right? So these are my lookups um, for a specific kind of data element that I'm talking about. The other area is really you got your base tables, and so this is where it contains the, the these are the tables that contain the information at the very lowest level. Um, so, I mean, when you start talking, for example, meter reads, having the information around the meter reads and all that information um, down to the granular details, which then is tied back up to the um, higher level, if you will. Uh, another aspect of it is your derived tables. So this is where we start to get into the translation of the star, um, different stars that are available. Um, and this is where you're actually being able to do that operational reporting and the data mining um, uh, that allows the user to be able to drill down to the different data elements. So, you know, looking at, you know, outages, looking at metering over the day, um, different aspects of that. Another uh, other element is really the aggregate tables. Now, these aggregate tables are, once again, already pre-built in there. Um, they leverage Oracle LAP cubes um, and so these ones here um, really help drive out some of the analyzing and summarizing of, of information at different levels so could be at a hourly or monthly or a daily or weekly type level but that's where the this can actually be utilized within the actual development of the um, analytics itself so that's kind of the physical implementation of what it is now, once again, Tom talked a little bit about the ETL that's internal um, with it. So, you know, getting from one set of the data um, to the other to get to your aggregate, you know, information and data, that's where a lot of this internal um, intra-ETL scripts happen. And so that's already pre-developed and put together within the OUDM that you can actually then be able to utilize. So your derived population as well as your aggregate population is, is built in there in a lot of cases. So the, what I wanted to go now is kind of show you guys firsthand what is some of this uh, and where you can actually be able to look at some additional information if you want to get, grab some additional information. So four different components uh, that we're going to look at right now. 
Um, one is just kind of looking at that semantic model and those reference bases that we talked about. Um, we have uh, Oracle's product team had put together a OUDM um, app that kind of flash app that kind of shows you some of the different elements that's covered within this and we'll briefly look at that. Then we'll talk about looking at some of these um, analytic packages that are already kind of right there out of the box that you can do and utilize. And then we'll actually go through a demonstration of looking at utilizing one of those specific um, packages uh, and, and develop the analytics that you, you see here on the screen. So if we, um, I'm going to jump out of the presentation here. So if we jump here into the um, model, so what we have here is <clears throat> we're looking at Enterprise Architect, uh, and it has a plug-in of the MD3i um, that we utilize. But you'll see how we brought in the different elements of the model. And if we look here on, on the left side, you'll definitely see how the TC57 SIM was brought in. So you see the 61970, 61968, and the 62325. Um, and as Tom had mentioned, we brought in the SIM, the SID also, um, as well as a couple other um, time dimensional and weather dimensional models to actually be able to utilize it. So this is where you're being able to actually understand and build your data and, and connect the dots, if you will. Now, as you know, stuff evolves and new stuff comes about, you, you can expand and build out the model as you see fit or as, as needed. And this is definitely one of the options of, on how you can be able to do that to push that out to an imp from an implementation perspective. Um, the other component that we wanted to look at was this uh, Flash app that the Oracle products team built. I apologize if it comes a little small on the screen. I um, was having some issues with my, my uh, new screen, so I had to switch. But this here, you can actually download off of the Oracle utility um, or the Oracle website. If you just look up OUDM or Oracle Utility Data Model, you can actually download this, and it's just a, a flash component that kind of gives you a good breakdown of the different data elements that are consistent um, within the OUDM. So you can see here on the, on the left, there's account management, you have asset management, customer management, uh, meter reading and control, network operations, outage management, a weather model, and then um, work management. So as we mentioned before, it was kind of not only are you looking at it from the customer's perspective, but this is also then bringing in you know, your traditional kind of T&D um, operations that you would see within the SIM model and bringing them all together within one enterprise foundational model. And so if you were to download this, you could actually uh, just bring it in here and open it up and uh, see what the actual model looks like of the different elements that are, are within here. And you can drive down to the different uh, areas. So if you want to look at asset location, what, how that is utilized and brought together, you can be able to look at that. Um, the one thing I would, I would like to note uh, for those is if you see this little arrow here, that means there's a lot more information um, and that's not visible within this, this tool. Um, that's kind of, you, you know, once you, you purchase it, you'll have the full rights to be able to see everything. But the, so there's a, definitely on all these ones that have a little arrow, a lot more information um, as far as what's within the model itself. But this is a great tool that if you're looking at, okay, how, what does this cover? Um, we definitely don't have enough time today to cover this, but if you want to dive into that, this is a great tool to be able to, to look at. Um, you see even with the network operations, you start in, getting into your, your phase mode and your SCADA um, management and operations um, that's included within the model. The next component I'd like to look at is we're going to actually look at, this is what I have here up on the screen is I'm using Oracle SQL Developer. And we have a OUDM set up on one of our um, internal servers, not Oracle, but um, extensible. Um, and so this, I'm actually connected into um, our sample OUDM database. And so you'll actually be able to see um, all the different tables. And we kind of talked about that before, looking at how they're sectioned off based on the different foundations um, within the, the OUDM, um, whether it's your logical um, model, um, or your aggregate. 
But the one thing I did want to bring up here, which I have here, is these packages that are already kind of pre-developed um, there. So this one here is a, a package uh, looking at, yeah, there it is. So it's this one here looking at uh, feeder reliability. So really trying to drive out your Sadie and Safi. Um, and so this comes there already, uh, you know, all the PL SQL is there already that you can be able to utilize um, that uh, populates the aggregate table so that you can run the analytics. And once again, this is something that you can be able to come in and if you need to make additional changes and modify, you can expand on it um, as needed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this actual package here that's used and uh, developed and we're going to generate some analytics right off of it. So what I have here, if it, everybody's not familiar, this is just Oracle uh, Data Visualization Desktop or DV Desktop. There's a cloud version of this also, a web-based version that you can be able to utilize. But I went ahead and I attached to the database and brought in this. Um, for this sake, I'm just going to kind of create this on the fly. But if we wanted to uh, be able to develop and look at it from the standpoint of, I want to look at... <clears throat> you know, my, uh, say for example, my uh, safety information, you can bring, be able to bring that over here. Um, I'm going to look at then my data elements that I have. Um, so I want to look at my safety, and that's going to be the main value of concern that I'm looking at it. doesn't give me a lot of information, but if I look at it from, a, look at it from the calendar perspective, uh, month over month, you know, you start to get a breakdown of that. And then being able to drill down once again, because all those um, data elements are connected, now I can actually then be able to look at it based off of my feeder. So now I have a, a good idea from a, looking at it from a um, safety of month over month by my feeder index. Once again, the feeders, this is demo data. So there's, um, these are just numbered, um, but you would, you know, have your actual feeder names in there uh, that you would be utilizing. Another case that you can be able to look at is from the standpoint is, okay, this is giving me information, uh, kind of tabular type information within the graph, but maybe I want to look at it from the perspective of where is this located and, and any issues, because perhaps you may want to additionally, you know, throw on some additional weather information or weather data. So what I can be able to do is bring in another chart here, <clears throat> I'm just going to add it here. It's going to be a map, and I'm going to. What I'm going to do is come back here, and I'm going to pull in my <clears throat> my lat and my long that I have with relationship to my. Um, whoops! Did I put? Yeah, I put it in there. I want to switch this and put the lat above. Make sure I get the right location. And then I'm going to look at number of customers that were actually impacted. Oh, before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to actually just use a regular map. So I'm going to do map type. I'm going to, oh, not map type. I'm going to do, uh, I'm just going to use Oracle Maps. Uh, there we go. So create that. So I can see my points here that I have uh, right now up on the screen with respect to my safety. But, you know, once again, bringing that information together, I want to be able to look at, okay, what's the number of customers that were impacted based off of this? So I can be able, since that's tied and the dots are connected, if you will, within the, within the, the schema, I can be able to bring that in and look at it. So you can see I'm ranging from 47 uh, customer impact uh, on this side, and then getting all the way up to 72 customer impact um, on my other side. And then I can actually say, okay, well, I want to tie that directly to my safety, which is tied to the, uh, the chart above. So now I'm being able to look at not only my customer impact, but I'm looking at it from, a safety, uh, from my safety perspective of what that actually is. Now everything we just kind of went over and what I created here, you can actually also do the exact same thing with the SADI. So we see here, um, I won't take the time right now to do that um, for, the, for the sake of time, but you'll be able to do and create the exact same type of reporting and utilize that and push that out. And as Tom mentioned before, independent of what your visualization tool, I just happen to be utilizing um, 
DV desktop. This is already built in here and the foundations there so that I can utilize uh, whatever perhaps enterprise based um, tool that, that you're utilizing with the enterprise from a visualization perspective. So what I'm going to do is um, jump back to our presentation because one of the things is looking at and Tom feel free to jump in here with me on this is um, looking at how does this look at from a you know kind of enterprise perspective um, so one of the ideas is uh, that we've been talking about and working with a, a number of customers on is putting this in place as we talked about you have all your different systems whether they're they're actual applications or their data marts or other data warehouses and how that all integrates through this this model and one option that you can actually be able to do is is utilizing for example a data warehouse or if you want to utilize an actual um, uh, database um, then that's where you can be able to push it out that now not only are you doing ad, ad hoc type reporting like we just demonstrated but you're being able to establish those dashboards that are going to be reutilized as well as doing um, analysis on it and the key really here is by having this put in place you're understanding and knowing your data so that it's not only can you be able to look at it from different perspectives but at the same time it's a scalable architecture that you can continue to build as different service models come into place as different needs come into place Tom? Right. yeah and, and yeah the, the big thing too was what you know one of the big uh, I would say overarching goals frankly of, of the OUDM was to really be able to separate the the concepts of data integration with uh, analytics and reporting. Um, up until now, you know, pretty much everybody had their own schemas and their own um, reporting environments that they were working from. Um, and, and the problem with that, of course, is you know, you really those those <clears throat> those analytics efforts are basically responsible from from birth to death of how we get data from source systems into their schemas and then back out again into some intelligible fashion. Where what OUDM was really intended to do is to allow integrators, uh, you know, vendors, you know, Oracle could certainly provide it for their own tools, but but it's the idea of IBM and 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 uh, Extensible and whomever uh, could provide, you know, product-based integrations from any application into this standard environment that's that a standard that everybody knows, right? It's not some proprietary thing that that somebody came up with. This is a SIM standard that everyone knows and everyone uses. And once the data is there, then other third-party uh, analytics providers can provide their own IP around this standards-based data piece. So again, Oracle could provide its own, but the, the point being is that any analytics provider could come along and provide standards-based analytics on top of this now standard set of data. So we now have kind of two halves of the equation now where, you know, one half is the integration piece, letting the integration expert do that, and then the other half being the analytics experts to be able to leverage that data and do something intelligent with it. So that's really where we see the, the real value of this is to be that common language between that data side and the information side. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, I mean, I think one of the biggest things is just the fact that so many times folks don't have a good understanding of, of what they're trying to develop from an analytics perspective, and a lot of it is just they don't have a clear understanding of what the data means within the organization, whether you're integrating from a system to a system or a system into your, your data warehouse or your data mart um, to run the analytics, and this is a mean that can help uh, establish that commonality and that semantics across the organization um, and really it's a footprint that you can continue to build as the enterprise build and as you increase um, what what you have that you need to uh, provide to the organization definitely and, and it's a it's a language essentially that the utilities are already used to I'll, there's been a number of utilities that have used sim for application integration today I mean a, a large number have used it not necessarily enterprise-wide Although, although quite a number of those have too, um, but uh, it's it's certainly a language that's in use at 
a great number of utilities already, and it, and it sort of makes sense to then use that same language to define data at rest as well as data in motion, right? So it's yeah. um, suddenly you now have the ability to, to take that same understanding of data and data in motion and apply that to your data at rest to be able to drive analytics. Absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> so that, that's what we wanted to be able to share with you. Um, I did have one or two slides just about Extensible itself, but I don't want to bore folks around that. But um, I mean, really, Extensible, we, we've been able to partner with uh, Oracle on a number of occasions. Um, Extensible is actually uh, owned by Dobo Engineering, as I mentioned at the beginning. Um, our focus has been in the utility space as far as information management, integration, and data. Um, done a lot with uh, smart grid related activities um, and so we've, we've kind of modeled that out and you know as far as what we do and the support that not only that we provide for the utility companies but even with partners like for example Oracle um, you know I, I feel like Tom we're we're always talking every day it seems like it absolutely because there's so much change within the utility space um, especially when you look at comparison of where it's at and compared to the financial industry, there's a lot of change that's happening. Um, and, and a lot of it is focused around the data and what does it mean and how do I use it, um, whether I'm, I'm operating from a plant level as far as my generation or I'm now coming for an executive level understanding, you know, what changes do we have to make from a financial and uh, perspective over the next year. And the only way you can really have that clear line of sight from, you know, the field, if you will, all the way to, you know, running and making decisions at the enterprise level is making sure that that data is connected within the organization. Absolutely. And if I could, uh, if I could make one small plug for these guys, uh, Extensible, we at Oracle are, are very proud to have these guys as partners. They've been a great uh, asset. Uh, for us and for our, our joint customers. Um, you know, we, we provide a lot of different tools and a lot of different technologies. Uh, Extensible really knows how to put them to best use. They understand data better than anybody out there, and uh, they understand the SIM better than anybody out there. And so, so uh, yeah, we're, we're very pleased with to have them on board with us uh, in terms of a, a partnership going forward. They've been instrumental in getting OUDM built and also implemented at a number of different utilities as well. So thanks very much to those guys. Oh, well, thank you for that. Well, um, what I like to do now is we actually do have a couple questions. I like to turn it over. We have about um, about eight minutes um, before the end of the webinar, but we do have one question that's in here. And so once again, I'll remind everybody, if you have any questions, um, feel free to utilize the uh, question submission panel. So we have a question here, um, and I'll read it out loud, um, Tom, and we, we can both look at it together. How does this approach handle semi-structured and unstructured data? Okay, yeah, no, it's, it, in fact, it's uh, very much the same thing, so um, the, the approach is, is similar. So, so you're right. We've been talking all about third normal form and, and stars and whatnot. So we've obviously been talking very much around structured uh, information. Uh, we are coming out with a, a new version of OUDM that's actually going to be based on uh, Hadoop as well. So there will be a companion uh, capability for semi-structured and unstructured data as well. So the idea is that they will be able to kind of live in the same uh, sort of, you know, data layer, right, with the semantic layer on top of that, still understanding where all that data is and how it's, how it's, how it comes together. So we can easily merge uh, structured data with the semi-structured data and unstructured data. So we understand kind of the context of all of that coming forward. So that's, that's sort of the next step. But that, that's really the idea is that the that the semantic layer should have the map for all data, regardless of what's, what, what, uh, kind of if it's structured, unstructured, or semi-structured, is once you understand where it is, what it is, and, and, and what it means, um, the idea is to be able to bring that all together into a coherent um, package. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that's, that's a good answer. 
Um, we have another question that came in, um, and it's, does OUDM currently cover human capital management information and financial ARAP information? So, in fact, Mike, you probably know better than I, but I, I can answer if, uh, if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, there's parts of it that is, is covered yeah. in some aspects, but I, I wouldn't say it's uh, 100%. Yeah, I, I, was, I would say the exact. I'd say what we focused on was the T&D side of, of the equation, more on the asset and, and operation side. Um, there are plans to expand it to, to every aspect of the utility, but we haven't yet, and we haven't had the demand for that yet. Um, so I would say if, if that's a need, that's, that's, that's great. We'd love to work with you and basically kind of making sure that, you know, our, our philosophy has been whatever, whatever our customers want us to go next, we'll go. So if the need is around HCM or the need is around uh, ARAP, um, great, let's talk. And that we can actually adjust priorities to make sure that makes it in sooner rather than later. Well, and I think that's one of the key things is looking at, at, at this model. As stuff continues to expand, you're, you're able to – it's a foundational thing that continues to grow with the, the organization. You know, and, and, and as Tom said, I, you know, I think both Extensible and Oracle were both very much that, you know, if there's a need, we're willing to partner and work with the, the utilities um, to help grow this because it's something that, that is needed tremendously within the organizations. Um, and, and we see the, the demand for it and willing to really partner with the utilities to help establish this um, across the industry. So I think um, that's all the questions. I don't see any more questions coming in. Okay, so um, for those on, what I will be doing is I will be sending out a uh, copy of the slide deck for folks to review, and um, and if there's any questions, feel free. Both myself, my either with myself or with Tom, both of our information right now is up on the screen, and you'll have it with a copy of the presentation. And if you have any questions, please um, follow up with us. Huh? Yeah, thanks very much, everybody. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful rest of the afternoon or morning, depending on where you're at. <laughs> exactly. Thanks, everybody. Bye.